call to order the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board for Monday, October 20th. We have a fairly short agenda, um, mostly updates on a variety of different items. The first one is a little bit more substantive. Susan Stamps is here, and she's going to um, explain a little bit more about the CPA and see if the board wants to endorse um, the CPA as some of the other boards in town have. So Susan, if you want to come on up. Sure. Hey, everyone. Nice. Hi. Nice. Thanks, Susan. So I talked to you before town meeting, and uh, we talked about CPA, and I gave you a brochure, and I think I sent it around. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same, it's just that it's specific to Arlington now, like for example, the law allows the 1% to 3% surcharge on the property tax. And town meeting decided on 1.5%. And uh, town meeting also um, uh, decided on all of the exemptions. So the first $100,000 of property value and the, all the exemptions available under the law for low income uh, folks and low and moderate income seniors. Uh, I'm happy to run through the elements of the law again. Um, I don't want to take your time to do that. If, but if you want me to refresh your memory, I can just quickly go through it. Do we need that? Do you want to? Uh, I, I, I brought some brochures with me. Oh, I think every, the board's pretty familiar with it. We we pretty much endorsed unanimously before town meeting mm -hmm. that we were in support of the CPA. So what Susan's here for is for the board to endorse this again before the vote um, takes place in town, which is November, what, fourth, fourth. the 4th. Uh, a number of boards in town have endorsed it. The Board of Selectmen has not. Uh, well, three, not as, not as a board. Not they do not board. take a vote as a board, but three out of the five members, um, Dan Dunn, Joe Kiro, and Diane Mahan, have endorsed it and uh, six out of the seven uh, members of the school committee. And uh, we have a lot more town boards endorsing the ballot question than we even did for town meeting. We have uh, the Conservation Commission, Historical Commission, the Robbins Library Board of Trustees, the Historic Districts Commission, the Cyrus Dallin Board of Trustees, the Open Space Committee, Sustainable Arlington, um, several task groups of Vision 2020, the Reservoir Committee, the Fiscal Resources Task Group, and the Spy Pond Committee. We also have the endorsement of the Commission on Arts and Culture, because uh, they see that the CPA is only going to be good for making uh, the town more of a destination, particularly in the area of historic preservation. And also the Bicycle Advisory Committee, who is um, going to be working on major upgrades to the Minuteman bikeway with Arlington and with uh, Lexington and Bedford and these are the sorts of things that uh, Community Preservation Act can pay for which Bedford and Lexington have but Arlington doesn't yet so they're hoping that the town votes for it. And we also have the support of uh, many town groups. Um, the League of Women Voters has endorsed it the Arlington Historical Society, the Land Trust, Old Schwamm Mill Preservation Trust, Housing Corporation of Arlington, Friends of Spy Pond Park, Friends of Arlington Great Meadows, Friends of Waldo Park, East Arlington Livable Streets, and Mr. Cooper Watershed Association. And about 200 individual supporters. It's an impressive list. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we can just go around if anybody has a comment or a question for Susan while she's there. Hi, Susan. I have a question for you, just yes. to, for my own edification. Can CPA funds be used to maintain existing resources? Okay, so, so CPA cannot be used for maintenance. So, for example, if you're talking about a park, it can't be used for mowing, for weeding for pruning the bushes. Mm -hmm. It can be used for installing new park benches, for uh, upgrades to the, you know, for, for new drainage systems, for new turf. Mm -hmm. um, it could be used at the high school field, um, for infrastructure. For safety, for? Mm -hmm. For safety, um, uh, uh, disabled access. 
which is so, a big deal in our parks. I, I know that in some of the waterways we have recurring problems with uh, knotweed and uh, I'm sorry, water chestnuts and things yes. like that. So that would not be able to be addressed through CPA money. I I can't think of a way that it would could be addressed unless perhaps I'm not familiar enough with with water chestnut how you deal with it. I know it's a really tough problem. I suppose if it involves some dredging, mm -hmm. um, which is more of an infrastructure type of change, it's mm -hmm. possible, but I really don't know. And usually it just involves a harvesting machine yeah. and then individuals and kayaks, mm -hmm. laundry baskets. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's painstaking work. Okay, question. So I don't have any questions, but I mean, as, as far as the endorsement is concerned, I guess from my perspective, I do think it's different now that it's going to the general election than it was to town meeting. Um, I kind of view our role as, uh, you know, to town meeting is taking up zoning regs and, and things that have to do with zoning and urban development and everything else. And obviously, I think this touches upon those different things. And so I think it made sense for us to endorse it in respect of, you know, as town meeting was concerned and to say, hey, it makes sense to put this on the ballot and let, let folks decide. Um, I guess, and I'm not sure I can put my finger on it, um, but I'm a little less comfortable on the endorsement uh, for the general election and the actual um, uh, uh, telling voters what they should do and, and how they should spend their money and, and everything else. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to phrase it uh, too well. But I do think there's a difference between the two and the role that this board plays, I guess. I do see us as an advisor to the town meeting mm -hmm. on things, and that's kind of our role. And I don't necessarily see our role as being an advisor to the electorate as a whole. Um, and although, you know, from my perspective, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm still kind of up in the air where I am, but I, I think, I think, uh, Actually, I think the CPA will be a very good thing. I just don't think it's this board's role to um, it, to kind of state that to the electorate as a whole, outside of what we've already done for town meeting, which was advised town meeting with respect to that. Um, you know, and, and I think just to even put a finer point on it, you know, part of the brochure I think talks about, or maybe even the website talks about the central school and that type of thing, which is under our purview. I mean, it's a little bit. I don't know. It's a it's a little bit different. It is on part of urban renewal, you know. It is it is under our auspices and that type of thing. And I, I'm not sure, you know, if if this passes and you know CPA funds, it makes sense for the historical preservation of the central school. Then that might make some sense. I guess I feel like a, a little bit of a conflict there, um, as far as the general public and the general electorate are, are concerned. So, so I, I gotta admit, I'm not terribly thrilled with endorsing it as a board um, is kind of where my head's at on this one right now. So, uh, so your, personally, con your conflict is kind of where the ARB is in charge of yeah, some historic structures exactly, like Central School. Exactly. And, and so are we just doing it uh, to, our board. To, our, to our board and everything I else. I get, I get a little bit, you know, I'm not exactly sure. It, it could be a perfectly good use for CPA funds. Mm -hmm. And if it passes, I think that's great for us to explore. But I'm not sure that I, I feel comfortable in endorsing it to then kind of turn around and say, oh, yeah, let's, let's see what we can do there. So, I, you well, know. That's one of the big reasons that a lot of seniors are endorsing it, because there's a lot of infrastructure changes they'd like to see at the senior center, which is mm -hmm. your building. Yeah. And I also, re I think I recall um, that in your statement to town meeting that you talked about how you felt that the Community Preservation Act fit in with your vision for the town and um, the redevelopment board's um, role in helping the town and it, it certainly came up a lot in the master planning process. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to speak to that, Carol. I'm sorry, I was writing. I missed the oh. beginning, Susan. No, I, I was just saying that um, that I thought that that in the planning board's endorsement at town at the time of town meeting and perhaps in their written statement to town meeting, I remember reading it quickly and that there was something in there about how you felt that it fit in with your role in the town um, it, to help you 
help the town fulfill um, planning goals, which include making it more of a destination place, improving um, aspects of the town, such as historic resources, which will draw economic development and spur more the kind of development that you'd like to see the town. So I, I wasn't, I, I, I wish I had brushed up on that now. So I don't really exactly remember, but I remember thinking, oh yeah, they totally see it as their role to do that. So I'm not sure in many other towns the planning boards have supported mm -hmm. the yeah. ballot question. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I'm just, I, I don't know, it's just, um, I, I look at it as is two different things, mm -hmm. and uh, that might not be the right way to look at it, mm -hmm. but um, it's kind of where my head's at right now. Okay. So. That's an interesting point. I don't have any questions. I, I personally think CPA would be a great resource for Arlington. So I'm glad you're here again. Susan, just remind me of the mechanics of how the funds get approved and distributed potentially not the specifics just how it works um, but, how but the funds are accumulated or how they're paid out how they're paid at both just quickly what's the okay well mechanism is really oh, just to remind me so the mechanism Fresh. for uh, so under the law a local locally controlled uh, community preservation act fund is created right it's under the control of our town treasurer in town meeting right um, and that gets funded from two sources, the, a local source and a state source. Right, I and know, I remember, yeah. Okay, the local source is a 1.5% surcharge on the property tax after deducting $100,000 of property value. Right. Um, figure the property tax on, the property value minus 100000 multiplied by 1.5%, and that's what the surcharge is. It's a separate line item on the property tax never gets rolled into the whole property tax for two and a half purposes or anything like that. And um, the for the average Arlington house, it's about $86 a year. So that's this, the and there are many, many exemptions. So low-income folks and low- and moderate-income seniors will be completely exempt from the tax. It's not a sliding scale. And the, the income guidelines for those exemptions are very, very high. So for a senior to find a 60 plus, which you know I, I could argue with that, but well, that's what that's what the HUD guidelines are, 60 plus, and that's what's used to determine eligibility for a household of four, where there is one owner occupant who is age 60 and over. If their household income for this household of four is under 94,000, they're completely exempt. Mm -hmm. If it's a household of two, where one of them is 60 plus, they're exempt if the income is under 75,000. So, so yeah. this, then the state. So then there's the state that contribution. That allows the state then to contribute. That's right. And so um, the, the law provides for matching funds from the state, and the amount of the match just depends on how much money there is in the state pot. In the state pot, is uh, funded by surcharges of the Registry of Deeds. It's a $20 surcharge on most documents, $10 on some, but $20 on right. most documents. Those go into the state fund, and at the end of the fiscal year or the beginning of the next one, they look at the fund and see how much money there is and how many towns have CPA, and they divide it up. Um, it was 100% match. In the first several years, it was started in, I think the first towns passed it in 2001. Um, so the early adopters, and, and a lot of them um, passed it at 3%. And if, if it's 3%, there's even more money. But it was 100% match for the first six or seven years. And then starting around 2007, 8, 9, um, it started to go down as more towns came in. Mm -hmm. And the lowest it was, was two years ago, it was 26%, which is still a pretty good return on the Arlington do dollar to get a 26% return mm -hmm. on the residence investment. Last year, the state legislature actually, for the first time, appropriated an extra $25 million for the state fund. Right. 
And so when those monies were paid out to the 155 other cities and towns that have CPA, it was a 52% match. So for the state, it's always generating from this. Do you, excuse me. Do yes. You, yeah. Once it's in place, how who decides who? So, so you get you get the the town money and you get the state money. Right. And there it is in the CPA fund, and there's a committee um, appointed under the statute who's in charge of. Um, taking project proposals, discussing them, having public hearings, and then ultimately making recommendations to town meeting. So the town meeting would approve anything? Town meeting has to appropriate all the money, just like any other appropriations. <coughs> That's and, just to remind me. And that committee, by statute, has to have a member appointed from, by the Housing Authority, one appointed by the Historical Commission, one appointed by the Redevelopment Board, one by uh, Parks and Recreation, and one by, I knew I was going to forget the fifth one. Uh, oh, the Conservation Commission. And then there's four other members that the selectmen can appoint if they'd like to. And we would, we've been recommending ever since town meeting that there be at least one member from the Finance Committee and or the Capital Requirements Committee. Mm -hmm. So, so this board, this committee would recommend to town meeting. Yes. So they have hearings, and it, there's a lot of publicity about it, different projects, and then they bring those and in the form of warrant articles to town meeting, and then town meeting votes on them. And they propose them, not the selectmen. Correct. And um, the uh, one of the great things about the CPA projects is that the. The idea would be that a lot of the projects that are going to be proposed are ones that are already in the capital plan. And, I mean, we can't write that into the law because that's not what the law is, but that was talked about at town meeting. That's why we want financial people on the committee because there are many items, there are many projects in the five-year capital plan, some involving your building, some involving the library, which is a historic structure. Um, which can be paid for with CPA money, so those those items can be taken out of the capital plan and free up monies for other town purposes. Thanks. I remember yeah. that. That was a good sum. Yeah. Even portions of the high school. Yes, that would possibly. be historically preserved. If it's going to be a be rebuild be versus. It's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Potential. But the 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 senior center or the the library. The Jefferson, Cutter House. the Jefferson Cutter House is really badly in need of some very expensive repairs. You can't see it from the outside, but it's yeah. there. There. Yeah, Carol's um, gone over some of those in detail with us. <laughs> Do you want to add anything, Carol? I would only add that the um, housing preservation, open space, and recreation are squarely in a, a planning board's wheelhouse because they're land and um, the towns preservation um, patrimony, and that is, um, those are elements of a planning board's responsibility, and certainly elements of the master plan. So it, it, I understand it, I think it makes sense that they would turn to the redevelopment board. I understand what you're saying too, I think that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I'm articulating it well, but it's well, I think no, you did. No, I took the no. minutes, and I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand. So, but I, it is. I actually was wrestling with the same question, Mike, and um, I think I came. I, I came down on the other side of the issue only because, to my view, I think it's important that the electorate know how CPA can help implement some of the planning board's goals, um, and. I think it is a tax, and no one wins popularity contest by recommending oh, yeah. a tax. But it is, you know, the fact that the state is going to be matching to some degree that tax money, we are getting more bang for the buck out of each tax dollar. And um, in a perfect world, that would that could be used to mitigate some of the other items that yep. are in the budget. Whether or not that happens, who knows? I mean, that's a process that goes through finance committee and town meeting. Um, and I also trust the voters on this because I think that you know ultimately they're going to decide, regardless of whether there's an endorsement or not, if, if, the, uh, if the CPA makes sense for Arlington. Um, personally, I think that it does. Um, 
and I think it's okay to let the voters know that it directly ties into a lot of the goals that uh, uh, the Redevelopment Board has and with respect to the master plan and so on. But having wrestled with that for a while, yeah. I know the unease that you sort of feel like saying, gee, are we, are we sort of you know, trying to, to, to sway the electorate? Um, I guess I, I just have a lot of faith in the independence of the electorate. So Yeah, and I guess it, it goes to that. It, it, I guess it's also just, you know, the role of the body, too, I guess. And, and let's be clear, I'm, I'm, I support the CPA. I do think it's going to do great things. It's, it's more, um, and taking a, a, a political view that might not be as, as well-liked is not something I have a problem with either. It's, it's more just, like, I could, get, I could wrap my head around it pretty easily on the town meeting because of the fact that as far as stuff goes in the warrant, that, you know, we're supposed to do that. That's, mm -hmm. that's our job is to give our opinion on things in the warrant that affect redevelopment, et cetera. And I just feel like this this yeah. just is just a little bit outside outside that. I don't, that. I don't see a whole lot of difference. The, I mean, town meeting is our citizens. They are the representatives of our citizens. So a recommendation we make to town meeting is no different than a... Right, and I have no, I have no problem with the uh, CPA folks saying that the redevelopment board uh, endorsed it to town meeting. It's just mm -hmm. that coming back for the next thing that says, okay, now endorse it to everybody else. For me, that's not necessarily, and the charter is that you will report to town meeting on things in the warrant mm -hmm. that affect redevelopment. And so that's part of the charter. So I don't know, I just don't see, look, I, I'm not going to vote against this because I don't want it to look like a like I'm like a non-endorsement. Mm -hmm. I I I'm going to take a little bit of a wimpy way out here, and I think I'm going to abstain mm -hmm. because I don't think that, from my perspective, uh, you know, I don't think I don't think a, a nay vote shows the right my right frame of mind mm -hmm. either. So mm -hmm. so from my perspective, I think I will abstain from this particular vote. So yeah, I I tend to fall on the side of Bruce's argument. And I've heard all the arguments yeah. um, back and forth during town meeting. I really feel as a planning body that this falls within our our full capacity and it's almost our mandate to take a stand on it one way or another to show the citizens of the town that we do or do not support the CPA. But I think, I think it's a very important. I also think that the fact that the legislature, in its wisdom, included the redevelopment board among the mandated members of the Community Preservation mm -hmm. Committee, they also see, saw the redevelopment board as having a key role right. in these sorts of things. So. And I think all the other bodies that also will have a key role. Yes. Maybe not all. No. Well, all the ones that I, I are did, mandated have have endorsed most yes and don't have the same yeah. conflict that you're thinking of and i yeah. understand your conflict yeah. I and, do. and i think i think from my perspective we already endorsed it we endorsed we it have. to town meeting and i think the you know community preservation arlington can factually say that the redevelopment board endorsed it to town meeting and i think that to me is enough and this one just goes a little bit you know further and i'm you know, sleeves off the vest, if you will, or whatever. Anybody else have any other comments before we open the floor to a uh, motion? Do I hear any motions to uh, vote? Do you want to do you want to vote in uh, endorsement or support for the Community Preservation Act? Uh, can I say something? Mm -hmm. So we would be looking for. You can use the word support, you can use the word endorse, but we would be hoping that as part of that it would be that your endorsement would appear on the website in the, in, for the ballot committee um, that is supporting the question five. So the motion would be to vote to endorse uh, the adoption of the CPA in question five, <coughs> as it appears in question five in the November 4th election. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Susan. I really appreciate it. Good luck, Susan.
Can I ask a question? Uh, in relation to the CPA. Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Mondrew, town meeting member, Precinct 17. As I, uh, first of all, Mike, I appreciate your point of view. I pre appreciate your stance. I don't think this board should endorse this to the citizens. I, sh I don't think they should ask for votes. Endorse it to the uh, town meeting, but not to the citizens. Also, as I campaign around town, I notice that, that most people either don't know about the CPA or are confused about it. And one of the statements that was made in the paper and by you, Ms. Stamps, is that it is estimated to be an $86 a year charge for the average household. That should read, the initial year is $86. Every other year is going to go up based on the uh, tax base. As the tax base goes up every year, 2.5% or more, this dollar value will also increase. I think that's important to be made clear to the people. You mentioned that you had a question. And I question? do have a question, yes. Okay. I have a question. I've, I've followed this uh, for a long time. I know a lot about it. I've heard a lot of questions. There's one question I have never heard. Ms. Stamps, will you... Excuse me. Address the board. Okay. Not Ms. Stamps. Uh, I understand that there's going to be a hefty budget associated with the CPA. Do we know who will benefit from that budget? Do we know who will be employed for, by that budget? I think there's been a lot of publications out there, and there's a whole website dedicated to the CPA that explains all kinds of information about how the increases may or may not happen, how much is dedicated to each of the four different mandates, the historic preservation. There's a minimum of 10% for each of the four different groups, open space, recreation, historic preservation, and affordable housing. After that 10%, there's a committee that's going to be decided upon, and there's some mandate as to who the members of that are, and the Board of Selectmen have a right to assign others. Uh, Ms. Stamps went over all of this just now. Okay. So that committee will be formed, and that committee will then take recommendations for projects, but in the end, it's the town meeting who will decide which projects get funded, which right. ones do not. Project so it comes back thing. to the town. Projects is one thing. What about the budget? The budget is going to be used to for, what, for office space, sure. for salaries. I'm guessing someone is going to get a job out of this. Can I? Sure. Do you mind? Sure, go ahead. Um, so just to be clear, I wasn't for endorsing it yet again. Um, if it came before this board and it was in our purview to approve the CPA, I would have voted for it. Um, so just to be clear. However, that's not at all in our purview, and the budget is not in our purview, and none of this is in our purview. I understand. So, although we're endorsing it, we can't answer these questions for you. I was hoping it's not the Mrs. right body. Stamps, but but that's, this isn't the body for it. I understand. That's so, true. I think that you could talk to her privately. The CPA is actually up. having a meeting on tonight. Tonight, there's an in depth meeting being held by the CPA committee. Yeah, it's at the Hardy School. At the Hardy School. That would have been the place to go and ask your questions, though, okay. unfortunately. Thank you, sir. And maybe that meeting is still going on. You could head right over there and ask the same questions. I've got another meeting. Committee. Yeah, we have representatives over there. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I was just, I was just curious as a town meeting member. Can so you, you state your name? Oh, then? Sean Harrington, Precinct 15, Chairman of Precinct 15. Thank you. Um, so you already, I was just confused by some, um, I've had a long day, <laughs> midterms and all that. Um, midterms. Uh, Mid, uh, election season plus school, so you get midterms versus... Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, so you already endorsed it before town meeting, correct? Or before town meeting, you endorsed the CPA? We did. Unanimous. So my question is for the board. Are you going to try to find a way to present it to voters that you are going to be... that what your endorsement means, the second endorsement means versus the, the first endorsement? The second endorsement will be on the website, along with all the other bodies that have endorsed it. Yeah. Other than well, that, we're I, not making so, any other statements. Well, what I was, well, that's what I was meaning that's because what, what I was understanding from Mr. Kayer, and which is my concern, what? was simply was not a question of being for or against no, no. it. Well, once, it's just again, saying, once again, it, it's I just want to make my position. No, 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 I, there. no, 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 no. The the thing that we approved because I was chairman at the time. Yes. Okay. For the uh, mm -hmm. for the town meeting vote was we endorsed the selectmen's. Mm -hmm. Proposal. Yes. That's what we endorsed. This is something yes. different. Now it's moved on to the voters, and this endorsement is to the voters. Yes. My question is, is will there be an attempt by this board to differentiate 
the two because a lot of people, I mean, myself, I was kind of confused. Wait a minute, you endorsed it once, and I think the initial response by quite a few people, including those constituents I have in Precinct 15, was, well, why are they re-endorsing it? It seems like political grandstanding rather than actual, what is this endorsement? I mean, I think there's a lot of confusion by no, that. No, I think it's very simple. There was a request as to whether or not the board would endorse it, and that endorsement will be on a website that the voters can look at to see who in town has endorsed it and who has not. There's individuals on that, and there are different boards and organizations on that website. That's what this endorsement <coughs> But I guess, my, I guess my big concern is that talking to... My, my last, this isn't a public hearing. No, no, I was just, well, I was just so confused it, by that mainly because I have people in my precinct. What is your exact that. question? My exact question is, hopefully, that if, is this board going to try to find a way to differentiate and make it easier for people to find out something, anything, just saying we, we had one endorsement during town meeting, for town meeting, and one endorsement to the voters. Because people are getting, conf when I was telling people about this meeting, they were getting confused by it, simply saying, well, it seems like they're just re-endorsing it, you know, and it just seems like it's trying to make political hay almost. I think people are confused by the whole issue. You know, you have a lot of people that... I think people are confused by the whole issue. They should be attending the meeting right now. The lady had some of that confusion. There have been articles in the newspaper. There is an entire website. There was a very good informational meeting held, so... If Thank I you can, for yeah, your, your questions one, and your concerns, but I don't feel I we need add to differentiate. one thing that may, differentiate. may help answer your question. Um, I think it would be more confusing for the voters if they saw that the Redevelopment Board had endorsed this before town meeting, but was taking no action where all these other groups are being asked to endorse it. I mean, doesn't that raise the question like, oh, you supported it at one juncture, how come you're taking no action now? Exactly. And I appreciate my colleagues' very well articulated my, 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 point my, of view. But so I don't think it's grandstanding. I, I, I don't think it's yeah. like saying. All I was simply saying was um, just if there could be a way for the board to maybe put out a press release or something like that on, on the Arlington website, Arlington Town website, something specific. That way there's something that at least I can tell people in my precinct who are confused. So they say you can go to their website. And you can differentiate the two. We will take that under advisement. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for your comments. Greatly appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda building, leasing, and RFP update for the Central School in 23 Naples. I'm going to turn to Carol for this. Okay. Uh, we have. We are prepared to, uh, I am prepared to um, discuss three requests for proposal tonight. You recall we talked about the three spaces that the board would put out to bid. Uh, one is 23 Maple Street, which has, uh, the lease has expired, so there are tenants at will. And it's, um, they've, we've exhausted the extensions that were available in that lease. Uh, the other one is an office space occu currently occupied by the Mystic River Watershed Association in the Central School. And the other is a roughly 300 square foot space in the Central School that would be um, put out to bid with one of the qualitative criteria um, asking what benefits the proposed use would provide to seniors. This is a space that we hope that the Arlington Seniors Association would be interested in bidding on. Um, so I communicated with Andrew over the last few weeks about some thoughts on how to set the, the not less than rent for the purposes of issuing the RFP and the legal. Um, the legal ads actually were, were um, it will post in the Central Register on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and it will be in the Arlington Advocate this Thursday and next Thursday, and it will be posted in the building on the website. So what I'm recommending for uh, the minimum rent is for 23 Maple Street, uh, a minimum rent of $9.30, which plus each of the, for each of these requests for proposals, 
we're trying to get a 50 cent per square foot contribution, a separate contribution for capital, capital improvements. And, um, so for uh, 23 Maple Street, they're, they have not had a rent increase during the period that they've been tenants at will. So $9.30 is what they're, they're, roughly what they're paying now. So Say that again, $9.30? $9.30 a square foot. And 30 cents, okay. Right. And there is budgeted work, exterior and interior, that's been delayed because the bids came back um, twice what we had budgeted for the exterior work. So there's been some delayed improvements. So for that reason, um, I think that it's it makes sense to position the minimum rent um, at roughly what they're paying now, and then to try to negotiate with the successful proposer um, for accelerating in later years, but also trying to get that 50 cent per square foot capital contribution. With room 306, which is the office currently occupied by Mr. River Watershed Association, proposing a somewhat similar rent, but a little higher, $10 a square foot plus the 50 cent per square foot um, capital contribution. Because it's a, it's a quieter floor, it's uh, a little bit more removed from the fray, even though it's, a, um, it's not class A by any means. It's um, under the eaves of the roof. And it's open to a stairwell down to the building craftsman's office. So it's not market rate, really, but it's, it, it's also by um, the standards of some of the other spaces, it is a little quieter. So for that reason, I'm suggesting $10 a square foot with 50 cents uh, capital contribution. And um, lastly, for the um, office 128, that's what, on the blueprint, that's what it was called. Uh, that's about 300 square feet, and I rec I'm recommending that that space be priced um, a little less than 23 Maple Street. Um, we, I, I would like very much for that to be um, an affordable rent, and I should add that with both the room 306 and office 128, I'm trying to position these rents to at least cover operating costs. We, I don't know if the board recalls, um, the Watershed Association, the board had asked me at one point to um, check in with Mr. River Watershed Association about thinking about beginning to pay some operating costs. Um, so I had given them some warning mm -hmm. of that. Um, over a year ago. So it's, these are, these rents are intended to at least cover operating. Uh, so space 128, I'm suggesting $9.10 a square foot plus 50 cents for the capital contribution. For a term, I'm suggesting uh, for all three leases, a five year term with two two-year extension option at the option of the board. You can mix and match. You can do what you If, if there's a, a better idea, I'm open to it. I just um, Five years seems good, and to have a potential of um, almost a 10-year ten tenure for the successful proposer, I think is pretty, pretty good but also calling the first term five years also gives both parties a little, an opportunity to evaluate without making a really long-term commitment. But I think it also shows these proposers that uh, they can make some plans, that they could have some stability for some time. In the model lease, model lease is included with each RFP because one of the criteria is one criterion is uh, you score better if you're making fewer changes to the model lease. So you have to include the model lease so they can see it. I'm not asking for a security deposit, and I'm not asking for operating costs. Uh, 
um, on some recent leases that the town prepared for other tenants, we did not ask for security deposit or operating costs. We could, but in the case of security deposit, there's a couple reasons why I'm not. One, they're hard to keep track of, and it's just an administrative expense. I, I think that for the most part, I'm it's a little bit of a risk, not including security deposit, but I think it's a very low risk for the type of um, potential user who would be interested in occupying a building with other public service and educational tenants. And, and, um, and in the case of the summer school building, we also have a town department in that building, so the, I, I think the risk is low. We also have a clause that in the model lease that would um, protect the town's financial interest if someone decided to um, break the lease. So you'd continue to get, under the um, model lease, you'd continue to get, I think, four months of rent if someone decided to break the lease. So I think there, it, it's more trouble than it's worth to propose a security deposit. I'm open to other arguments, though, um, and I'm, I'm very interested in the board's wisdom. So those, I think that's the size of it. I, th I think I've included the details that I wanted you to consider, but I'm sure that there are some things I've left out if the board has questions about the model lease or the RFPs or any um, reaction to the um, recommended rents. So you work closely with Andrew mostly? I did uh, communicate with Andrew. Um, we talked last week, and I went over what I was suggesting for, what I was thinking of, and why for these minimum rents. Um, I think we might have fine-tuned, fine-tuned them a little bit. Maybe we'll start with Andrew. Then, do you have anything to add? So, like Carol, <coughs> just describe anything she missed. No, I think Carol covered covered it all. Actually, she covered some things we didn't talk about too. So it's always a positive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, one of the things that we, we did discuss, though, is this 50 cent surcharge on each of the properties to sort of build up a fund for expenses that can be, ca that can be put toward maintenance. That's a yearly buyers. surcharge, too, right? Not a one-time. It's, it's, it's a consistent surcharge. It's built into the rent. It is, okay. So, for example, in the, what's the senior center now? Nine dollars and ten cents plus fifty cents per square foot. That's nice. So that's kind of fifty cents is allocated. The fifty cents will be allocated to that maintenance. To fund. the maintenance for that particular right. space. Separate fund. So it wouldn't go into the general fund. Right. It would go directly to. Directly back to that space. Yeah. For maintenance. When you're saying maintenance, though, it's really capital, future capital. Future capital improvements. It's yeah. Not maintenance. maintenance isn't really the right word. It wouldn't word. be for janitorial. Or right. No. That. I just didn't hear. So um, those are the rates, and do they have any increases? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. We're um, twenty percent, two percent. Excuse me, two percent increase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Great, Carol. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What about the search? We got a twenty percent increase. No, two percent is um, what is uh, in the model lease. Yearly. Two percent yeah. yearly. Yeah. But the fifty stays consistent. Correct. Okay, so that is not getting. Thank you. Uh, that is a point I wanted to make. How far above is consistent operating do you think the base is without the 50 cents? Is it right? Pretty square with oper covering operating costs? I know that's hard to tell you. The operating costs, uh, utilities, uh, gas, and electric is um, roughly mm -hmm. nine. Nine dollars um, per, per square foot. It's it's a little difficult. It's a little challenging because not everyone in the building pays operating. Mm -hmm. um, but we we really tried to crunch it pretty well, and it seems like nine dollars is a little more than nine dollars a square foot. Is uh, covers operating costs. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. On the. Um, the options, you mentioned that the options would be at the board's option, not at the tenant's option. 
Yes, and, and that's in the model lease, and both parties have to agree, obviously. What you've done in the past is you, you've you offered, I, I think you, you've written letters, for example, to um, the Housing Corporation of Arlington for their last uh, extension. Uh, if it's a question of how to word that, if that's, if that's not the best way to phrase that, I think that we can just change that in the model lease for all three. Yeah, I guess. If that's confusing. I think more often in the, in the private sphere, it, the option is have the tenant's option as opposed to the landlord's option. So I just wanted to make sure I was hearing that correctly. And um, I guess the other thing I was going to ask is in the event of an option, does the base rent get reset? Or is it all still working off our old base rent with the 2%? The latter. OK. For, for the extensions. That's how, that's how these are structured. But they don't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. I think it was structured that way to try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. But it may, it may be that keeping it simple is at the expense of uh, you know, it's always hard to project what the future, you know, market rental market is going to look like. And so, you know, in some ways, I mean, in five years is not that far out. I mean, if you had a long, if you had a ten-year term, you might want to just reset the base rent all over again and say, okay, now based on what we think prevailing rental values are, it's X dollars with the two percent increase starting as of that. At five years, I think we're kind of in a in between area there. Mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to double check that, Bruce. And then when you have the two year extension, <coughs> you have the option at that That's time of changing it, or you'd have to write in the lease? Well, I think if I'm understanding, on, if just we elect to give the tenant the option to stay on, if I think what Carol is saying is you would still be operating from these base rents, mm -hmm. but just with the a crude two percent. But then we'd be, we'd be out nine years though, so five years. We would be. Yeah. So that maybe is a concern. But we can terminate. But we could terminate. That we we could not extend the option. We could say, okay, do. If it changes that route, yeah. We could we say can, we want to request for proposals. We could make our choice after five years. It's like we're just giving them first refusal in a way. We could mm -hmm. say we're ready to. Uh, or no, we don't even need to. We can say we were ready to terminate. We're, we're not going to exercise, we're not the, exercise option. the option. But yeah, I, you're I, invited I, to I usually hear it the other way, but this this gives us a lot of more leeway, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite, yeah, I think it, it's it's right. And I think these kinds of tenants will probably be okay with that. Other mm -hmm. tenants might not, not want to do that, um, that are in a profit business type of thing mm -hmm. uh, that puts them at risk. But in this case, I think it may work the right way. As far as I, I'm sorry, I'm it's mostly nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. It yeah. is all nonprofit. It is all nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it so makes far. sense. I'm going to. I can slide down. And, um, okay. That's that's a uh, model lease uh, attached to an RF, uh, one of the draft RFPs. But as far as I can tell, it's intended to continue that two percent increase through the increased terms, but. This is your profession, Bruce, so I'm going to defend. Oh. Well, Bruce is looking at that. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. okay. um, so on 23 Maple, so I think you you said that the different uh, rates cover operating expenses, and then you've got the 50 cent surcharge on, on capital. Do we think on 23 Maple, with the amount of work that needs to be done there, that you know, what is operating, so we're thinking that the rent is only going to take care of operating there too, or we, we were just more talking about the central school when you were talking about I was that. talking about the central okay. school. Okay. Uh, the, we don't bear any operating costs for 24 okay. people Okay, okay, great. Those are, those are the tenants uh, operating costs. That's right. Perfect. Okay. That, that I was getting, because we were kind of talking about the project as a whole, I think, and I was getting a little bit confused. Right. And I, I appreciate that, and I will also double check. Um, I'm making some slight changes to each model lease. Yeah, just make sure that that and is. I, you don't want to <laughs> miss that, right. and that, that that becomes what triple now. Yes. Then that makes sense to me. So okay. Any other 
other questions while Bruce is looking. What did you say the current rate was at 23 Maple? It's... Is it also 9.30? I just want to see if I have something more precise. My recollection is that it's around 9.30. Okay. So it's basically staying the same plus the 50 cents. Plus, the, and if they were the successful proposer, mm -hmm. they would be paying, or whoever will be paying, um, an additional fifty cents a square foot, and then it would go up two percent each year, according to the model lease. One option I I, I considered was bumping the rent up to what what it would be today had we continued a rent accelerator a rent accelerator each of the last few years during which they've been tenants at will. Mm. But that also could potentially be negotiated. Well and what we're asking for a minimum. Rents anyway. It's a minimum so, rent. Uh, that's true. Yeah. And it's clear in the RFPs that although it's not the only um, criterion that a high rent, the higher yeah. you're proposing, it, it, after all, these are proposals. We're putting that's this out point. to bid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great, right. So if somebody else yeah, proposes higher, then yeah, the competition has yeah. yeah. um, I'm also trying to ensure that we have an opportunity to, I think the current occupants are happy. Mm -hmm. We've been happy. If it happens that they are all successful, great. If there's interest and there's a really compelling proposal that meets all the criteria, and we need to ask an, a current occupant to vacate, they're going to need some time. So I'm trying to make sure that there's that language in the um, RFP and the Model Lease to make sure that we afford ourselves an opportunity to mm -hmm. give them some time. So, uh, for example, the Room 306, we are giving 120 days to close the lease so that we can allow the current mm -hmm. occupants to find mm -hmm. home if they need to. I think it's... A, a remote possibility, but the whole process contemplates that there is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Certainly. Mm -hmm. One last question on that. Mm -hmm. So on the RFP for, um, I forget what the first floor uh, room is called, Office 208? No. One, 128. 128. Office 128. Um, on that one, I think we had talked about putting something in the RFP about serving seniors? Yes. Is that making it into the RFP? Yes, I'll, I'd like to tell you how that's phrased. I'm glad you brought that up. And there's no criteria for them all to be nonprofits necessarily. Right. It's not explicit, but it's it's almost explicit. <laughs> it okay. doesn't say anywhere that you have to be a nonprofit, but um, Throughout, there's um, the use referred to as a public service or education, normal educational or public service use, and a lot of the criteria are set up that way. Um, Andrew, I think you have the um, one for the senior. If I could borrow that for a moment, the um, space that we're hoping the ASA will bid on. So, one of the proposed community benefits is service to Arlington seniors. A highly advantageous proposal would include a proposed use that provides services and benefits for all Arlington seniors. An advantageous proposal would propose, would, the proposed use would provide benefits and service, services for some seniors or residents. A, a not advantageous proposal would propose uses that would not focus on serving Arlington seniors. It might be a very legitimate use, but it, mm. it would not hit a lot of our bumpers if it's not going to serve Arlington Seniors mm. as this is drafted. 
Uh, other community benefits are um, how it might benefit or affect the neighborhood and residents in the immediate vicinity, how, will, how the proposed use would benefit or affect the existing occupants of the central school. Um, and so yes, yeah, those three. And of course, um, financial resources to maintain the rent. Okay. That's good. Great. It sounds, it sounds like it's, it's all set to go. I hope so. I'm going to review them very carefully. We want okay. to, um, they've been advertised for Wednesday, so I want to have this them Wednesday. buttoned up. Yeah. yeah. Right. Did you want to finish looking at that? I took that away from you before. No, you I, was, I was mostly okay. done. Okay. <laughs> mostly done. Yeah. I, I think maybe the board should discuss, we got off track with it, the actual terms of the leases. I, th I think it might be a better idea to do a three-year lease with two one-year options to take it to a total term of five years. And at that point, it opens up the opportunity to renegotiate, to reset the rent, to send out our fees again. Mm -hmm. uh, the way it's written now, it, it's nine years is a long time. But it's Not five years. Yeah. It is and it isn't. See, I'm, the only thing I worry about that is that we want to do this every three yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, five years. But I think we we wouldn't do it every we wouldn't do it every three years. We do it every five years, more realistically, three, four, yeah. as opposed to because we do three plus two, mm -hmm. as opposed to five plus four. So three yeah. years with like two one year options is what you so a total yeah. of a potential total of five years. I I like something a little bit longer because um, having been on the board now for four or five years. I think one of the things that ends up happening is, is because our meeting schedule is what it is, sometimes all of a sudden we're put in a place where, oh, we got to deal with the leases tonight, mm -hmm. and, it, and it becomes kind of this rush, rush, and not that you can't plan or anything else, but I, when I think about it, I'm like, well, you know, three years is not that long. I also get a little bit concerned for uh, folks who are making plans and you know uh, doing different uh, things with their space. That three years just isn't very long for them. Um, you know, I, I know if. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, so for me, I, I think it's I think it's a little bit hard to ask a, a uh, you know a, 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 a prospective tenant to just sign up for three years and know that they only have three years of certainty. It just doesn't seem like that long. Mm -hmm. to me. Maybe especially with the capital improvement. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. No, presenting it that way. Yeah, we are presenting I mean, it that way to the people also, but, but that is a capital improvement add-on. Yes, right, yeah, that's, that's, the aware. that's, that's right. referred to a few times in the RFP and the model lease. Well, I guess, you know, Andrew, I, I see some merits to both yes. sides of this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if we found that either, well, if we found that we were underpricing the rent. We simply wouldn't give the option to extend. We'd just say, okay, we're gonna go through another round of proposals and five years are up, and the market's radically different from and where it was. Yeah, when we because it's the board's it was, option. Not the because it's option. the board's yeah. option. Yeah. Um, just to answer the question that I had raised earlier on the options, if we do give them the option to extend, my reading of the language in the model lease is, because it's an extension of the existing term, and there's nothing explicit in the lease to say otherwise, that it would be subject to just the 2% increase that you have for each of the first five years of the lease. 2% on the base. 2% on the base. So there wouldn't be mm. the opportunity to reset the base rent if we exercise the option. We, we yeah. would not have the option. We, wouldn't, we, would have, we have the option, if you will, of not granting the option. We can say, nope, five years is up. We're not going to give you the, uh, the next two years. But if we said we are going to give the, you the option of extending your lease term I for another two years, the rent for that extended period of time. But you could say we're going to rebid it. Yeah. Yes. If time yes. Can, you came out of whack, yeah. 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 We, we go back through this process again. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we could make an adjustment if things just needed to be adjusted after five years. Right. By saying we're terminating your option, we're rebidding, we're reproposing. That would be the only way to make an adjustment. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bruce, did you review the offer to extend language? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's. So it doesn't say anything about option of the board or the tenant, really. But it, 
Oh, it does say that it's at the option of the board. That, that the landlord shall have the option to right. extend, yeah. Correct. Okay. And we think we can get away with that well, because yeah. of the nature yeah. of the tenant. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, I thought it was That's a legal question. Was You're asking more about a, right. a, a economic private. question. Can we get away with it? Will the market, you know, respond? And, well, I think if they came back and it didn't work, then I think that's a, you know, certainly right. leave it to the folks who are doing it. But then, you know, maybe the reset language does need to be in there for those options. So if for whatever reason, it, well, I guess I guess it's the model lease. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if, if a tenant said, if we got no tenants to take us up on that particular uh, lease because of that provision, I guess mm. you could just flip it and say, okay, right. it's at yours, but it, get, but it has to reset, I think, right? Mm -hmm. I, think that, I think that's what you would do in that situation. So, yeah. Anyway. They're not prevented from modifying yeah. this lease. Right. Yeah, right. I'm yeah. saying yeah. if they, they do, then, you know. I, I didn't know if I was clear about that. Okay. okay. Good. 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 Any other Thank input you. you need on moving forward? That sounds good. So we're going to leave the terms as they are? Sound five five years, years okay. Yes. Uh, five years, two and two. Okay. Everybody's okay with that? Yes. Yes. And those um, minimum rents sound okay? Yes. yes. They do. Okay. Thank you. They do. Thank you. That was record time from when you said you were going to start those. <laughs> you had already started them, hadn't you? <laughs> there was a model lease, and that helped a lot. Oh, that helps. Yeah. Okay. Back to you again. Master plan update. Okay. Let me the board received an invitation that I sent last week to the November 6th uh, presentation by the plan, master plan consultant, um, Judy Barrett from RKG Associates. To the it's, it's an invitation to the redevelopment board and the board of selectmen, to both boards to come to the presentation, to give both boards an opportunity to kind of kick the tires on the draft plan and the draft recommendations, and for her to hear um, any additional input, feedback on the, the draft. Um, I shouldn't say any additional, because this is the first, this will be the first we expect to receive the, the draft plan um, the last week of the month, so we will just have it in hand when um, the November 6th meeting of the Master Plan Advisory Committee will, um, will be an opportunity, everyone's first opportunity to uh, learn what she's putting in the recommendations based on the work over the last uh, two years and the input um, from the committee. So that is in the Central School, um, the main room of the Central School, 7 o'clock on Thursday, November 6th. I hope you can make it. I will post that in case. Um, Members, you better touch. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize that that's the same week as a board as a meeting of the board. That means I'm asking mm -hmm. to come out two weeknights in a row. Uh, well, two weeknights the same week. And that meeting we have two hearings already scheduled, so. Right. I wouldn't move that. I don't know if anybody noticed. Uh, Master Plan Advisory Committee's been putting articles in the newspaper every week in the mm -hmm. Advocate. Yep. I think they put their third one in this week. Barbara Thornton, Barbara Thornton has been writing them. a member of the Capital Planning Committee who has participated um, ardently. She's been to every every forum, every presentation, mm -hmm. um, and she really speaks um, and writes very well about the each element of the Master Plan she's highlighted in, in yeah. a different article. The it's first one was was excellent. I agree. Because she really explained what the master planning process is, going all the way back to how planning began and, you know, ancient Greece and what the purpose of planning is and and why we are still guided by principles of planning and what it's going to accomplish for the town. I'd love to get a hold of so it was great. Yeah. Do you have They're copies on the website as well. Yeah. I've actually been cutting them out. Oh, they're on the website? Oh, Great. That's funny. Yeah. So we Great. could get them right off the town website. Yep, take a look at the uh, master yeah. plan page on the town website. She's done a great job. Okay. I hadn't read the last three papers until, <laughs> <laughs> until yesterday. Was. So, so I thought all three of them in a... <laughs> I don't know why I haven't seen those. <laughs> was it correct? I actually do read the other. <laughs> <laughs> Speak well, this is a work in progress, <laughs> but this is a I'm sheet up that on kind some of outlines yeah. some of the themes that have emerged in the master plan process and 
the, um, oh, you're not supposed to do that, especially during cold and flu season, I beg your pardon. I will not, I, I did that old licking of the, the old-fashioned <laughs> thing that, oh, yeah. so I'm not giving you the props that I did that, I beg your pardon. Um, so these color codes have to do with um, land use codes, and we're, this is, we're trying to show that each of these themes cuts across several of the master plan elements by using these color codes. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't need to belabor this too much, but I did want to hand this out to you so you have this and you can review it, uh, because these are things that came up over and over again from the start. And I expect that there will be discussion in the master plan and the recommendations on these themes. So after November 6th, um, we'll solicit input and feedback on the plan until the December 4th. This is the, the draft timeline we're working under. Uh, the warrant opens December 2nd, so we'll prepare a warrant article to seek town meetings endorsement of the plan. Then January 12th is this board's hearing on the master plan so that the, this planning board can consider formal adoption of the master plan. As you all know, uh, in, under Mass General Law, a planning board adopts the plan. And then the, um, the warrant closes, and at the February 2nd ARB meeting, uh, would, I would imagine we would have a possible vote to adopt the plan after the January 12th hearing. And uh, town meeting, last week of April, town meeting is April 27th, so makes it all sound so simple and elegant, but <laughs> that we do have a lot of work the Mass Plan Advisory Committee and this board uh, for the January 12th hearing. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the November 6th meeting is going to be uh, very important, I think, because that's the first time that um, it will really be unveiled and the, the chance to hear Judy Barrett um, and to discuss with Judy Barrett the recommendations um, and get, get more advice from her on mm -hmm. the plan and, and recommendations. So I do hope you can attend. And if we, as a board, feel we need to discuss it further after that, I, I think as a board we can discuss it at that meeting, since we haven't really taken a meeting here to discuss it. But if we feel there's more discussion necessary, maybe we can incorporate that into a December meeting. Certainly, yes. You, I, mean, I would recommend Later it, November, yeah. December. It's a great idea. I, I, yeah, I we had discussed doing that, we just haven't. I, I usually, I mean, yeah. it's nice to have a little time to absorb what, yeah, and, and then come back with some thoughts. And since we're being asked to recommend this thing and have a hearing, we want to have a, a discussion, definitely. An informal, I mean, our, just among us, and with whatever, whatever support we need to really go through it in detail and give our right. reactions. Well, the, the recommendations that are coming out in the draft plan shouldn't be radically different than what we were seeing in some of the working papers so far. Right. Right. The recommendations, um, the mas master plan will have an implementation section that has a lot of nitty-gritty on who, uh, who the responsible party is for e implementing each step of the recommendations. Uh, that, I don't expect that's going to be too fully developed uh, by the end of October. But the recommendations, the general recommendations, will be. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be much different than what's already come out, you're saying? Uh, there, there were probably changes made by each of the subcommittees, right, along the way that we haven't seen. Yes, I also think that we'll probably see some new recommendations from, the, um, from RKJ's work. Uh, 